Are we in? Okay, let's get right to it. So, as you guys know, a great many of my videos and my shots of awe are concerned with the idea of the holy. Now, I'm a completely secular person. I, I don't really follow any religion uh, at all, but in some ways I would say my religion is love. My religion is awe. Every time I marvel at something, any time an aesthetic work like a painting or a film or a song gives me the goosebumps, um, I experience religiosity of sorts. Um, you know, Ernest Becker, the psychologist, used to say that love is a religious problem, that to love someone is to deify them, to render them holy. And what is the holy? <laughs> What does somebody who doesn't ascribe to any religion, what could I possibly have to say about the holy? Well, I think I have a lot to say about the holy, and that's because as somebody who, I guess you could say, is extremely sensitive to external mediation, to the effects of aesthetic works, of music, of place, of people, these things move me. These things um, can transform me. They can have real powerful emotional impact upon me and so I've always searched for the words to describe um, what it feels like to be profoundly moved and shaken to experience uh, opiated adjacency to experience ecstasis to move um, from here to there so to speak and Otto Rank uh, was the guy who first talked about the idea of the holy he also uses the term the numinous the numinous um, are encounters with visionary truth, truth that exceeds our intellectual capacities. Joseph Campbell said that God is that which exceeds our intellectual capacities, that God is a metaphor for that which can't be spoken, for that with, which can't be described in words, which exceeds our capacity to articulate. So this idea of the numinous, of that which can't be clothed in language, is very interesting to me. The idea of visionary truth, visionary understanding, revelatory ecstasy, whether you fasted for 40 days in the desert or drank the ayahuasca brew or ate some magic mushrooms with a bunch, with a bunch of Mazatec Indians in Mexico, it seems that certain biochemistry, certain molecules can engender encounters with feelings of visionary truth and aesthetic uh, impact. And I think the psychologist William Blake, no, not William Blake, William James, the American psychologist William James, and later Walter Penke uh, of, of Harvard, um, did these interesting, uh, they wrote in the book, The Varieties of Religious Experience, which, which William, William James wrote in, um, talked about what were the elements of a complete mystical experience, an encounter with visionary truth, an encounter with the mysterium tremendum e fascinosum, right, the indescribable. What are the hallmarks of an experience of such, uh, of such kind, right? Like, it, it, depending on your religion, your background, your cultural upbringing, no matter where you grew up in the world or what your interpretation of reality is, people who have these encounters with the sacred share these common characteristics. These experiences always have these common characteristics that show up. And I'm actually in production now on a video about the mystical experience as described by William James. Um, and uh, we're working on that now, but I'll give you a little teaser. So what are the hallmarks of a mystical experience? How do you know if you've had an encounter with the infinite? So it turns out one of the one of the things that always shows up in a mystical experience, and you can write this down, there's a feeling of unity and interconnection, a feeling of interconnection with everything, unity with the infinite. There is a feeling also of transcendence of time and of space. You feel like you are uh, freed from the shackles of the ego. The ego and the over-identification with the self dissolves to give way to a communion with the ultimate. So there's a transcendence of time and space. There's a feeling of the sacred. There's a feeling that you are connecting with something sacred, right? With something of divine origin. 
there is a sense of the noetic, right? The noetic basically means that whatever it is you're apprehending hints at ver a sort of a deeper veracity, at some kind of ultimate truth and ultimate meaning. So there's a sense of the noetic. There is a sense of ineffability. There's a sense that you can't put it into words, that you can't quite describe it, that it's indescribable. So it's ineffable. Um, there is a, net, a sense of paradoxicality, right? A sense that you could all of a sudden hold multiple opposing truths in mind at the same time. All contradictions are reconciled. So during these moments, there is a sense of paradoxicality where, again, all contradictions are reconciled and man has surpassed the gods. Um, there is a sense that the experience is impermanent and fleeting. So you, you, you can have a mystical experience and it can end a few minutes later. It's, it's fleeting, it's impermanent, but you will remember it forever because there's also a quality of it that is that is lasting that it signals a transformative shift in perspective and consciousness that is lasting that will last forever you are no longer the same whereas once we were blind and now we can see so I believe I've listed uh, I've listed them all hmm? oh right and there's also a feeling and this is very important I think this accompanies all of these feelings of unity and transcendence of time and space, of a sense of the sacred, a sense of the noetic, that this hints at visionary ultimate truth, um, a sense of the ineffability and the indescribable quality of it, a sense that, that paradoxes and contradictions are reconciled, a sense of impermanence and a sense of lasting change. Accompanying all this, finally, there is a sense of joy and gratitude and ecstasy. So these are the hallmarks of the mystical experience. These are the hallmarks of encounters with the holy and if we could do something with that if we could take what we learn take what we perceive during these rare and precious moments um, and share that with the world then then that <laughs> that uh, that is worth striving for right there's the line from the end of the documentary fly from death it says everything has been figured out except how to live so perhaps the better question is not what are we to do with death but what are we to do with life for life exists in individual moments and it is up to us to make sure that those moments are vital interconnected and grand to make a masterpiece out of life one that we would willingly live again and again for all of eternity this is what we could strive for and as David Foster Wallace wrote, the alternative, my friends, is unconsciousness, the default setting, the rat race, the constant gnawing sense of having had and lost some infinite thing.